السلام 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 وعلى آله وصحبه وزوجه وبناته وأولاده وأطباعه إلى يوم الدين Students, can you read Kitab al-Tawheed from Bab number 27? Bab number 27, Babu Maja'a fi taqliqi samawati wal ard wa ghaydihima min al-khala'iq wa anna allaha ma'afaydihi wa amrihi Yeah, read that part. باب ما جاء في تقييد السماوات والأرض وغيرها من الخلائق وهو فعل الرب وأمره فالرب بصفاته وفعله وأمره وكلامه هو الخالق المكون غير مخلوقه This is the عبارة بعينه انفق أكبر We have one of the greatest fitna in this living world Fitna started with the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq and he was forced to kill the, the people who were Muslim in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It's known as fitna ittidad, fitna mani'in zakat. The first people who separated government and personal ibadah. They said, this is personal ibadah. Abu Bakr, you have nothing to do with that. You have no business. State has no duty to impose on us. This is our personal zakat. Who are you to call for it? Okay, Rasulullah was alive, we gave it to him. You are not Rasulullah. This is the first fitna in Islam, separation of hukuma and ibadah. So this, Imam Abu Hanifa in Isharatul Maram says that our Akabir protected the deen with sword. And even today we are being killed and murdered like in the time of Ahmad ibn Hanbal, they were prisoned, some of them went to exile, and some people were killed and hanged by Mamun Rashid. And down the centuries, Always the ulamas were targeted. Najibullah in Afghanistan and other big names, thousands of ulama being shot in the football ground. So this is a legacy. Imam Bukhari rahimahullah is a warrior and his whole kitab is battlefield and he attacks everyone. And he, he lived a warrior, he died a warrior. The funny thing today, people doesn't know that Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, when he died and when he faced from his own community, the Muhaddisin, when he would come back to Bukhara and Samarkand, hundreds and thousands, in fact, the whole city will come out to welcome him and do his istiqbal, such as he was the Sultan. From, he was a spiritual sultan than the sultan himself, or the Amirul Mu'mini. So his laqab is Amirul Mu'minna fil hadith. But his own followers turned against him. Why? Did anybody ask what was the reason? Because Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah and his followers would say, some of them, it's not proven from himself, his Followers would say, Lafzi bil Qur'ani makhluqun. They say, Man qala, Lafzi bil Qur'an fa huwa muqtadi'un. And some said he is kafir. On this, Imam Bukhari wrote a kitab, very famous, Kitabu Khalqi Af'ali Libad. What is the meaning of that? Meaning, Ibad means slaves. Everybody is Allah's Ibad. The jinnat wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa li'abudun. He says everybody's action is Allah's makhluk. The kitab is based on two-sided blade. One is to attack the mu'tazila who refuse. They say we are the khaliq, the creator of our action. So first it was attack on them. 
The second is, they say our some action is not created. Like our tilawat, when we write the Quran, this is called uh, fitnatul mihna, for which he died, Imam Anwasha Kashmiri, under this bab. He said, this is the tasis. It's the foundation. This bab is the foundation for till the re last part of the bab, last part of the kitab. What he said is that Imam Bukhari faced a lot of trouble. And he was in a problem with his own community, the Muhaddisin. So what happened, he did not stand with them with the Muhaddisin. He was, who was he supporting? Whose call is it? Imam Abu Hanifa, in this bar, Imam Abu Hanifa, Allahu ma'asifatihi al-qadima, sifatihi al-zatiyya, wal-fayliyya, azaliyun qadim. Imam Bukhari is saying that. Qadim means ghayr makhluq. So the first kitab, Kitabu Badil Wahi, and the last kitab is about Wahi, about Kalamullah, about Quran. So the first bab is Abu Hanifa's inspiration, because Abu Hanifa is saying our tilawat is makhluk, and our kitabat, our writing is makhluk, is our action. The concept of khalqu afali ibad came from this ibarah. That what we do, what we say, is, is related to us. And we are responsible for that. And Allah said in the Quran, khalaqakum wa ma ta'amalun, that Allah created you and your action. So in our action is salat, in our action is tilawat, so therefore, Tilawat cannot be termed as ghair makhluk. Ghair makhluk means it was not created. What is not created is the sifat of Allah. So Abu Hanifa says Allah's sifat, one is zati and one is fayli. Both of them is qadi, means eternity, divine, divinity. Just like the Christians believe Jesus Christ is not created, is divinity, is divine. So when we say qadim, when you use the azali word and ghair makhluk, all three of them means they are not created, they are divine, godly, uluhiya. This is why they say he is son of God or he is God. Mu'tazili, on the other hand, they deny all the sifat of Allah. Because this is plural, 99 names, and all these sifat, seven or eight famous, they are the, they are the kulliyat of the, of the sifat. But duziyat, 99 names, Anwasha Kashmiri says, 99 name has been placed with a takveen. So here we are faced with this. So the first, this ibarah, read that, Fallahu bi Fallahu bi faydihi wa amrihi. Wahuwa fi'lu al-Rabbi wa amruhu, Fallahu bi sifatihi wa fi'lihi wa amrihi wa kalamihi, huwa al-Khaliq, al-Mukawwilu ghayru makhluqin. Yes. This is, it means, so this bab is a bridge between the previous 26 babs, it links with and the rest of the until 58 babs. This is where the bridge is. It's covered the previous and it covers rest of the babs until the last. What is that? That Allah's fail is qadim. Allah's fail is divine. Allah's fail is azali. It's not makhluk, it's not muhdas. So Allah, Allah's kalam, is Qadim. So Abu Hanifa, so the second Ibarah with which we are going to define that Imam Bukhari was influenced by Abu Hanifa's work. In fact, two greatest Saf Shafi Mutakallimin who are a great great grand 
teacher of Imam Ghazali, 370 Hijri, and Imam Ghazali died 505 Hijri, at least one and a half centuries earlier. One of them is called Abu Tahir al-Baghdadi. He's written at Tabsera Fiddi. And they were the master of Ilmul Kalam. They were Shafi scholars, not Hanafi. And they were even, you know, they were very close to Ashari Rahimahullah. Even uh, Ibn Taymiyyah in his Mujmu'ul Fatawa writes that Ashari and Maturudi are not the ones who established this. They had an influence from and other, like Ibn Hajar talks about that, and many other Musannifin talks about that, that Sa'id ibn Abdullah ibn Sa'id al-Kullabi, al-Qahtani, he was the master of Imam Bukhari in Ilmul Kalam. Now, Imam Bukhari died in 256 Hijri. His teacher, 240 Hijri. Ahmad ibn Hanbal died in the same year. But this guy, Kullabi, he was the Imam Ahli Sunnati wal Jama'ah min al Muhaddisin. And he's written against Al Hashwiyya. Hashwiyya is another Jamaat who believed just on the Zahiri meaning of the Hadith, which is related to the attributes of Allah, like Yadullah and Ain and Nafs and Saq. They believed in the Zahiri meaning, the literal meaning, and they believed in translating it, which came to be the source of Mujassima group who believed that Allah has a body. Allah says he's got hand, so we believe real hand. We believe he's got two beautiful eyes. So this is, this is batil. This is shirk. Imam Shafi said that mujassima al-musarriha kafirun. Imam Abu Hanifa gave them, one of these mujassima was coming towards Baghdad, he says, innahu kafirun. You have them in, the, in, the, in their words. So here, so in the time, the junior scholar, Imam Tahavi, who shared some of the teachers of Imam Bukhari himself, so he's very junior because Imam Bukhari died in 256 and Imam uh, Tahavi died somewhere in 323 in that area. So he was a very senior, uh, junior muhaddis. He's written Aqaid Tahaviyya, which is today, is said on the label of it, this is the aqidah which is shared by the uh, four madahib. And all the four madahib believe this to be their aqidah. Even today, on the beginning of that, what does Tahavi says? This is the kitab on the manhaj of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah in their aqidah based on Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Yusuf, and Imam Muhammad's uh, ideology. So whoever lived as a Sunni after Abu Hanifa till Tahavi is a label, it's a declaration that everybody must be on Aqaid Tahaviya, which is Abu Hanifa's dictation. But these two masters, Abu Ishaq al Isfaraini, who is known to be the Ustaz, meaning he is the Ustaz who called for all the all the uh, mutakallimi. He is the master. What does he write? In Al Farq, Kitab Al Farq Bain Al Firaq, who is the student of Abu Tahir Al Baghdadi, who died in 370 Hijri, and he married his daughter, Abu Tahir's uh, daughter. So his student and he is son in law. Both of these masters, you know, one of them wrote 30,000 pages on Ulum from their memory. So this is our, our legacy of the ulama that devoted their life in preserving the knowledge. So what happens here? They say, awwalu man sannafa fil islami difa'an an ahli sunnati wal jama'a min al fuqaha abu hanifa wa kitabuhu al musamma bi fiqhi al akbar. Now today some scholars here and there, they say, no, this is not 
Abu Hanifa's work. How can they deny this such a famous thing? Even Ibn Taymiyyah, he himself refers this Fiqh Akbar to be Abu Hanifa's work. And Mu'tazilis made this up because they say they are Hanafi. But how can they tolerate when Abu Hanifa himself has negated and criticized Ahle Ittazal? He, he's talked against the Mu'tazili group in Fiqh Akbar. لا نقول إن رضاه نعمته كما يقول أهل الاعتزال. We will not claim about these tavi that Allah's riza is his inam and Allah's ghazab is his azab and that his hand is kudra because لأنه ابطال صفته. And the first man, like Allama Bayazi says, the first man in Islam to ever use. Tawil Ijmali was Abu Hanifa because in his Wasiya he says, Inna Allaha la yajlisu ala arshihi, la yahtaju Allahu ila istiqrari arshihi. Fa aina kan Allah qabla khalqi? If before the arsh, where was he sitting? So he denies that. He says on Wasiya that yad is not laisa bi udwin. Wala jari hatim. So this extension is known as tavile ijmali in Islam. Mutlakan tavil haram nahiye. There is a difference between tavile ijmali and tavile tafsili. So Abu Hanifa denied the tavile tafsili, but he used the tavil. And the ijma is tavil is jais. It's not kufur like Ibn Taymiyyah says. A tavilu tahrifun. وَأَنَّ أَبْغَضَ أَقْوَالِ الْمُبْتَدِعِينَ التفويز And Vashra Kashmiri says our madhab is tafweez is to surrender the haqiqi ilm of these yad and waj to Allah. Allah knows best. Ibn Taymiyyah says this is the worst words of the mubtadi'een meaning those created new aqidah in Islam he defines them Qasim Nanotovi is known to be the Fakhruddin Razi of his time, and he's known to be the Ghazali of his time. And Ibn Taymiyyah says, Ghazali and Razi, they are the worst mushrik in Kitabul Bayan. So our Akabir, when you look at the work of Qasim Nanotovi on the Hashia, he will be quoting Tavir, means he believes in Tavir, and that he believes in uh, what you call it, using these terminologies of defining these words from Kirmani, Ibn Hajar, Aini, you name the Ibn Battal, it's full of that. So our Akabir believed when there is Zarura, we do Tawil in Aqaid, and that's Ijma. So no one can question Ijma. So now we are coming back to this. So how is Abu Hanifa connected here? Because Abu Hanifa used the Ibarah Al Quranu Kalamullahi Ghair Makhluk. Quran is Ghair Makhluk, it's not created. Wa Amma Tilawatuna Bihi. Wa Kitabatuna Bil Quran. Wa Kiraatuna Bil Quran. Makhlukun Wa Kalamullahi Ghair Makhluk. This is exactly what Imam, Imam Bukhari is trying to prove until the Bab number 58 that there is a difference between tilawat and that what has been recited. So, because kalamullah is qa'imatun bihi ghayru munfakkin anhu the sifat cannot be separated from Allah. And li'anna sifat Allahi kulliha shay'un wahidun la taghayyura fiha Allah's sifat, it doesn't accept any change. This is why he will say, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذَكْرِ He goes, Yus and Jahr and Khafi and, and Loud and Saqeel and Khafifatani ala al-Lisan Saqeelatani ala al-Mizan This is not Allah's Kalam. You can't do that. You cannot define Allah's Kalam with being heavy and light. This is the Sifat of the Makhluk. We say beautiful Qirat, beautiful uh, slow Qirat, 
بیڈ قرآت لاؤڈ قرآت سو قرآت جہری اور قرآت سری دیس کود بی ایڈنٹیفائیڈ ویڈ دی صفات آف انسان بٹ اللہ اس کلام اس نو جائز تو سے اللہ اس کلام اس جہری اور اللہ اس صفات اس سری اور ہی رائس ان کتاب خلق افعال لباد ہی گوز وَأَمَّا إِبْلَاغُ الرَّسُولِ القرآن وتعليمه وتدريسه مخلوقة وأن 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 تلاوة الإنسان قد يكون أحلى وأحسن وأليق وأرتل and all these أخفض وأرفع وأسود he he talks about different terming of insans qira'a but you can't do this with Allah's sifat no one can say Allah's sifat is beautiful it's loud it's, 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 it's not loud you can't do that it's only possible with insans qira'a these are the babs from 27 until uh, the last it's all about this he wants to prove that because he was facing a people who's known as like Ibn Hajar will say that these people are actually humblies. They're extreme. They are, even Imam Bukhari faced these people. Who were the people who, were, who, who wanted to kick out Imam Bukhari? It's written there in Kitab-i Khalq al-Af'al that some of these humblies, I think they are either stupid, they did not understand Imam, their teacher's word, or they are lying against him. One of the two. Because I know he's my teacher. When and how he said it, I know everything. That's written in Kitabu Khalqi Afali Libat. How he faced them. How even Ibn Hajar goes, this guy is going to do this about the difference between Tilawat and that Tilawat is makhluk and the Quran is ghair makhluk. That's actually Abu Hanifa. If Ahmad ibn Hanbal would have taken this road, he would not have ended in jail. Because Kullabi, who is his uh, contemporary, he beat, why is he called Kullabi? Kullabi means one who smashes his opponent. He destroys his opponent. He erases them. How is that? Because 18 times in the court of Mamunu Rashid, the Mu'tazili came into Munazara and debate with Kullabi. Every time he, he bashed them back. That's why he's called Kullabi. The Laqab, you know, why is he called Kullabi? Because of that, Allah has given him power. And you know what? In, uh, in uh, Isharatil Maram, they say that we... Kullabi did not do any ikhtilaf with Abu Hanifa. And all his aqidah, which is Imam Bukhari later on, becomes Raisul Kullabiyah. He becomes uh, the, the leader of the Kullabiyah. Uh, in, with him were Junaid al-Baghdadi, Haris al-Muhasibi, and uh, Ibn Hibban al-Bitti, and Muhasibi. These people were classmates of Imam Bukhari in Aqidah. And this guy who's their master, he is in with Abu Hanifa. So Imam Bukhari is not in, in Aqidah, he is not min al-muhaddisin. Li'anna al-muhaddisin are the people who were against him. Majority, only a handful of people of his students who sided with him like Imam Muslim and others. Rest of the team, hundreds and thousands of them, they were against him. That's why the major population of Samarkand and Bukhara was against him. He died outside his hometown. Why? He was the Sultan. He was the Mahbub. He was the greatest Muhaddis. And suddenly, why this? His own teachers and students became his enemy because he's taken the concept of Abu Hanifa Tilawati bil Qur'ani makhluqun. Because those people say, no, it's haram, this is kufur, you can't say that. They even went one step further. They said, 
wa inna awraqana bil Qur'an wa kitabatana fil Qur'an ghair makhluq qadim they say our tilawat is divine they say our our writing on the on the paper the Quranic ayat is this becomes divine and the and the ink becomes divine and the paper becomes divine and the covering of the Quran becomes divine Ibn Hajar says radda bihi alal hanabila al ghulat Ibn Hajar says that he identifies them so the last bab from 27 till end is the hanabila al ghulat the extreme ones not all of them some group so how does Abu Hanifa, so Abu Hanifa with his two ibarah, Imam Bukhari may have to write 58 babs to cover that. 58 babs to do the shara of Imam Abu Hanifa's two jumla in 58 babs with all these ayat and Quran. So this is why we say Abu Hanifa, Imam Bukhari died a proud Hanafi in Aqidah. As for Furu'at, Imam Muhammad went against him. Imam Abu Yusuf went against him. And we say, uh, Mazhab al-Tarafain, Mazhab al-Sahibain, and uh, all these uh, Shaykhain. Why is this? <coughs> Nearly one third of the fiqh is ikhtilaf between his students and himself. And even the, the Imam himself changes his views. Imam. Imam Shafi'i, he's got Qawli Qadim and Qawli Jadid. What does it mean? That he returned back. So what happened in the early days, because he's a direct student of Imam Malik, so that's Qawli Qadim. And when he met Imam Muhammad and Abu Yusuf, then he he's changed his mind and came to ahl iraq and uh, Ahlul Rai, and that's known as Qawli Jadid. So therefore, Kitabu Badil Wahi and Kitab uh, Kitabu Tawheed, because Wahi is a part of Tawheed, and Tawheed is a portion of Kitabul Iman, and Ahlus Sunnah wal Jamaa believe all our action is part of Iman e Kamil. Therefore, the whole Bukhari is about Iman, Salat, Siyam, Zakat, Minal Iman like Kitabul Iman. So everything in Bukhari is about Iman. And who taught Iman? Who taught the Ummah? The entire Ummah? Abu Hanifa. So it's a contribution of Abu Hanifa on this Ummah declared by Shafi scholars of the 4th century and the 5th century and the 6th century and the 7th century. And now they are blaming and cursing Abu Hanifa. Oh, he's Ahlul Rai. He only had 17 hadiths and all that stuff. You know what? Another Shafi scholar. This is Ajib, you know, and Masha Kashmiri says, when Allah wants to prove hujjah, he will he'll bring al-fazlu uh, lima yukhribuhu al-a'da. That's beautiful. If Imam Bukhari, if Abu Hanifa was praised by the Hanafi, they're going to say, garke murgi dal barabar. It's obvious they're going to praise him. But you see, Allama Suyuti is written on him. Ibn Abdul Bar written on him. And they, they protected him. And even another funny thing, uh, Mu'tazili, Ibn Nudayn, Fahrist Ibn Nudayn of the fourth century, he goes, the whole Ummah has to pray Maghfira and Rahma for Abu Hanifa. Because two thirds of the Ummah is his followers, either Muhaddisin, Fuqaha, Mujtahideen, all of them. Imam Abu Hanifa had 36 scholars, he turned them into Mujtahideen. And nearly 500 ulama who became Fuqaha under him. That's, that's amazing. So Abu Hanifa protected the Iman and the Aqidah of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah according to the declaration of Shafi scholars. So Imam, so this Shafi scholar last century, his name is Abu Zuhra al-Shafi'i, and he was the rector of Al-Azhar University. And he writes a kitab called Kitab Abu Hanifa. In there he goes, Abu Hanifa rahimahullah had in his collection, in his library, or in his uh, stock room, 
70,000 hadith. And if this 70,000 hadith, in a turn of a century, this will become 700,000 hadith. Now, Abu Hanifa, he's got 700,000 hadith in his collection because it doesn't have to be mahfuz, maktub. You don't have to be a muhaddis to memorize 700,000. If you have them protected, this is also known as because you get ijazah. So Abu Hanifa had 700,000 hadith by the time of Imam Bukhari. How much hadith Imam Bukhari had? 600,000. Even 100,000 hadith less. Imam Bukhari is 100,000 hadith less according to this Shafi scholar. So I'm not giving from any Hanafi scholars. All of them are Shafi scholars. So don't blame me, go and ask them. So what is that? That even in Kitabul Iman, some Ibara, Imam Bukhari turned into Bab, chapter, like Imam Abu Hanifa says, وَأَنَّ أَهْلَ الْمَعَاسِ لَا نُكَفِّرُهُمْ بِإِرْتِكَابِهَا إِلَّا بِشِرْكٍ Bi'aynihi same ibarah in Kitabul Iman. Imam Abu Hanifa said, Tafazulu babu tafazulu ahli imani fil a'mal. Abu Hanifa said that in Fiqhi Akbar. We Hanafis don't read his work. What do you mean work? Some people deny this is Abu Hanifa's work. In 30 fatwa kitab of the past, like Saraksi and like Kafi and like Shafi, and like Zahiri Riwaya, all the shara of these, 30 fatwa kitab, they mentioned Fiqh Akbar in, the, in Kitab al Nikah or in the beginning or other Aqidah kitab. And now the Hanafi Devundi scholar says, no, you know what, this is, not, this is not Abu Hanifa's work. Shame on you. How can you say that without tahqiq? Okay, last, Mullah Likari of Afghanistan. He's written shara of Fiqh Akbar. And he said this is Abu Hanifa's work. Don't you read that? There's about 15 shara of Fiqh Akbar written by Hanafi scholars. And they're proud to read that as Abu Hanifa's work. What is the Maturudi Aqidah? What is this Ibara? This is from Fiqh Akbar. And Ibn Hajar says, Imam Bukhari is supporting Abu Hanifa. And Anwasha Kashmiri says, Ibn Hajar is such a person, Hanafis can't dream of having any benefit from me. La yurja minhu al-fayda lil Hanafiya. But here, he had to say that. So, Kitabu Tawheed, 100% Abu Hanifa's Ibaras, Shara. And some people say, oh, you know, in Kitabul Iman, like as a sheikh's written, some jahil, ye dawa karte hai, ke Imam Bukhari ne, Imam Abu Hanifa par, Zor se mara hai, attack kiya hai, zor se liya hai, ye jahil, he goes, the jahil. So I've told you that Abu Hanifa zibarat laate hai, aur fir unko maarenge, koi akal mein aati hai baat. So all these stuff, what we need to know, that Abu Hanifa had 100% ahsan on this ummah, because he was fighting on behalf of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, 72 batil firqa single-handedly when he was just a young guy in his teens, 20, 22, 20, because he started fiqh. When Imam Bukhari could not handle his followers just in one ibara, lafzi bil Qurani makhluk, and on the other hand, Abu Hanifa is controlling and defying 72 batil Firqa single-handedly with Majus and Yahud and Nasara and Dahriya and atheists. And then all the emperors, all the Amirul Mu'minin wanted a blessing from him. On the opposite, Imam Bukhari is, is thrown out of the cities because he's... The, and then Imam Bukhari was called to be Mu'tazili. He was framed to be Mu'tazili. So all these fight, this is why... And Masha Kashmiri says, and even uh, Ibn Hajar and Aini and Qustulani, all of them says, why did Imam Bukhari have to? He doesn't do that. If he, if he wants to attack, one Bab is enough. One Ayat is enough. 
One hadith is enough. Why 58 bab for? for? And why 32 bab at the end? And why Kitabul Iman such? This is one of the beauty of Imam Bukhari when the matter is out of control and when the fitna is great, he brings and repeats his bashing and bashing and bashing. So you scholars, your duty is not, this is not a privilege today for you. It's a responsibility, it's a liability. Like Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah said to his students, it, this is your duty to protect the deen. Your duty to preserve the deen. Your duty that the whole ummah in, 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 in this planet, their iman is protected. That's your responsibility, like a police. His work is to protect from the criminals. So we know who are the criminals, who are bringing fitna. So you have to stop the fitna. Otherwise, you are not scholar. Your scholarly power, you have to be courageous like Imam Bukhari. The whole world went against him. And he died outside. He didn't bother about it. He stood with the haq. And he recognized the haq. Arina al-haqqa haqqan. Warzukna ittiba'ahu. So when you've known the haq, now you have to do the ittiba of that. You have to promote that. You have to preserve that in your life and in, in your family's life, in your community's life, in, in, in every, every, every time you have, every, every chance you get, you have to make sure you are serving this ummah. You are protecting the responsibility as the, as the deputy of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are the people who are the inheritor of the Nabi. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sacrificed his whole life in promoting the deen. Balligh ma unzila ilayk. O Nabi Sallallahu your duty is to promote, is to propagate. Your duty now, after you, this is not a, a what do you call it, the end of it all. This is just the beginning. Just like I say, when you, when you pass your driving test, today you are going to be given the full license. Means what? Now you can drive, you can work on the kitab yourself. You don't need to ask anybody, is this, did I understand wrong or right? Because when you are given your certificate, we are giving you license to read. We are giving you license to uh, study on your own. We, we checked you for seven years. Your, your understanding will not be leading to misguidance. So now is from today your study starts because you have been given the tools of knowledge. You have been given the tools of the knowledge. It's called ulumul aliya, and then you have ulumul aliya. Ulumul Aliyah is Quran, Sunnah, and Fiqh, which is Manqul, and Ulu and Tafsir, and Ulumul Aliyah, Noho, Sarf, Headache, uh, Masdar, Mantiq, Usulul, Usulul Fiqh, Usulul Hadith. They are technical stuff. Without this, this is why Ashwali Tanvi Rahimahullah used to say, these ulama we make, they are ulama istilahi. There's two kinds of ulama. Ulama bil majalis and ulama bil... Green card or red card. So what we have, you need to make sure your life is devoted for the deen. When uh, Hussein Ahmad Madani, rahimahullah, uh, uh, he had... <coughs> You know, they were mates. Nehru said, Mulana sahab, why don't we accept your madrasa there as a, as a you know, national syllabus, national certificate? He goes, you know what? When a boy comes to our madrasa, the first thing we tell him, your life is work for the deen. So your life is work for the cause of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you are a role model. You are not just yourself. You are responsible for all the ulama. So your misbehavior, 
your misconduct or your uh, taking something, uh, underestimating it, so what, everybody does it, you are putting a dent on the name of the ulama. So you are not anymore yourself, you are a national property. Just like police is a national property, you are not your families anymore. You have sold yourself to the, to the army of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to promoting it. So if you do a small mistake, it's worse than some awam doing big mistake. And we say, Alim how can this guy How can this guy do it? He's, he's an alim, he's wearing shirts, and he doesn't have a topi in the market. You know, not to have a topi in the market, that's in Rasulul Hadith. If a muhaddis was to walk in the market and his head is not covered, he's not reliable. His hadith is rejected. Or oh, this guy is not for his God. He's not dindar. He's not, he's not trustworthy. This is how serious this matter is. So you are a role model like Hazrat Umar. Once saw Hazrat Abu Musa Shari while coming from Hajj. He goes, why are you wearing this bright color? Some yellowish. He goes, it's not haram. He goes, no, you are muqtada. People make you a dalil. They will say, Abu Musa did this. You should not do this, what the awam does. So you have to be extra careful. You might have, you know, on five people, you have 350 eyes on you and cameras. So you are watched. People want to know what you do is the lead for them. They will say, oh, this Maulana did it. So if it was haram, why did he do it? If it's makru, then why did he do it? Your action becomes the lead now. Your afal becomes for the awam, hujjah. So you are, you have become liable for the ulama. So may Allah uh, give us the tawfiq. May Allah accept you. May Allah accept this, this uh, masjid. We thank the masjid people and the committee and the trustees and all the brothers who worked hard with us. Allah give them a big uh, jannah. Uh, elevate them in akhirah and make their work sadqa jariyah and all you Allah accept you and all those and our aim is to have a group of people who are giving their life for Allah to preserve the deen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.